the Michigan Wolverines. The maize and blue colors, the block M on the jersey, and the winged helmets are some of the most iconic pictures in all of college football. So many athletes have donned this uniform, from Desmond Howard, to Charles Woodson, to Tom Brady, to even our former president, Gerald Ford. But the uniform hasn't always been this way. It took over a hundred years for the uniform to transform to what we recognize today. We here at Wolverine TV are going to take you through that journey, starting with the Michigan jersey. The Michigan uniform in the late 19th century was much simpler. The only recognizable feature would be the maize and blue school colors and the block M. There were no pads worn by the players while playing the game, or even numbers on the jerseys until 1915 when they put them on the back and 1930 when they put them on the front. The iconic maize pants weren't worn until 1940. 60 years after the first game was played back in 1879 against Racine College. In 1949, Michigan wore white jerseys for the first time and adopted that all-white away uniform in 1970s. Names were put on the back in 1977 in the Rose Bowl against USC. Michigan adopted the maize and white away uniform for years to come, even with the temporary switch from Adidas and their night jerseys until recently when Harborough brought back the white uniform and Michigan signed a 10-year deal with Nike. In the 100 years of Michigan football, only six uniforms have been retired. I met with John Folk, 40-year equipment manager, to hear some of his stories about the jerseys. When, uh, Anthony Carter was here back in the 80s. Uh, Bo called me in one day and he says, you know, John, uh, we're losing too many yards when Anthony Carter gets tackled by a jersey. And uh, he's so fast that those players who just reach out and grab his jersey, give him a tear away. So I had to call up two weeks before the season started, and I had to have Russell Athletic, who made the only tear away jersey in the country, make, make some white ones and some navy ones for me to have for Anthony Carter. So Anthony Carter would go through maybe five or six jerseys a game because all you had to do was touch the jersey and it would like disintegrate. Cleats worn by Michigan players have gone through a drastic change over the years. It started as a wooden sole football shoe with leather until the 20s when they added replaceable screws. It didn't change again until the 60s when turf was introduced. At first, the Wolverines didn't wear Nike or Adidas, they wore Puma for a while until Bo made the official switch to Nike in 1983. Here's what Falk had to say and whether he got in arguments with Denard Robinson about his shoes. Yes, so we had to end up inventing another shoe for him. We had to get a shoe that had uh, elastic bands inside the tongue that drew the shoe on like a slipper. So he could slide his foot in there and the bands would tighten up around his foot and uh, then he could leave his shoelaces untied. Because when he started to wear the shoelaces, his shoes were falling off all the time. So I had to come up with that invention of getting the elastic in there, the fitting, to tighten up on the, on the foot. What was that conversation like with him? I mean, does he, did you like, did you tell him to just tie your shoes at first? Or at he, first I did. And then he goes, oh, no, baby, John, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's, that's, that's me. I'm shoelaces. And I said, well, yeah, but I'm going to be jobless if we don't get it straightened out. So uh, that's when we invented the, the, uh, the elastic. And, and, and I went in to talk to him, and, and uh, he was very good about it. As long as I can keep my shoelaces flopping uh, and my shoes stay on, that's fine. So, well, we've got that song. So that's how we did that. The Michigan Wolverines helmet is one of the most iconic in all of football. But it hasn't always been that way. It started as leather in the late 19th century. And the wing tips, well, they weren't introduced until Fritz Chrysler in 1938. Francis Wister was one of the last to wear the old helmets, while his brothers wore the winged ones, and the helmet has hardly changed since, adding a plastic mold with Dennis Fitzgerald being the last one to wear one in 1960, and the face mask was added in 1949. Michigan players' numbers 
were added to the sides of the helmets briefly, but that tradition didn't remain long. One that did remain, though, was when Bo decided to put stickers on the back of the helmets. Players were rewarded for big plays at the time. The stickers momentarily disappeared in the early 80s, but came back in 1995. The stickers remained an icon on the back of the Michigan helmet until Gary Moeller took them off because he liked the simplistic look of the helmet. With Harbaugh at the helm, the stickers have returned to the old Michigan ways, like many of the Michigan traditions. When Lloyd took over, and, and, and they, each coach has his own prerogative of how he wants the uniform to look, and each coach has his own prerogative of how he wants to uh, decorate the helmet. Lloyd felt that the Michigan helmet was stand, standing out enough by itself. And so we took all of the football clubs and helmets, and we just had the Michigan wing. And if a player back in those days would go to like an all-star game, and they'd always trade with the Ohio State guys. And so they would give a sticker from Michigan to the Ohio State guy, and the Ohio State guy would give them the Ohio State So they did a couple all-star games like that, and so Lloyd called me in and we decided that no player from Michigan will wear a sticker from another school. We will stand out alone as Michigan. Michigan and uh, and the players like it.